Perspective can be defined as the appearance of objects relative to one another, as determined by their distance from the viewer. In the context of filming a video for two-dimensional analysis, this relates to the distance between the performer and the camera. The following section investigates the effect of camera distance and movement out of the plane of motion on calculated lengths of objects and measured angles. To demonstrate the effect of camera distance on perspective error, images were recorded with the camera in two locations. In the first scenario, the camera was positioned near to the plane of motion at a distance of 5 metres, and in the second scenario, the camera was located far from the plane of motion at a distance of 15 metres. In both scenarios, the optical axis of the camera was orthogonal to the plane of motion. In each camera position, an image was recorded with the performer in three different positions, as shown here. In the first image, the performer is standing in the plane of motion. In the second image, the performer is standing half a metre behind the plane of motion. And in the third image, the performer is standing half a metre in front of the plane of motion. With the camera in the near position, the performer appears to be much smaller when standing behind the plane of motion and much larger when standing in front of it. To quantify this difference in height, the height of the performer was measured in each position. The height when standing in the plane of motion was used as the scaling information to calculate the height of the performer in the other two positions. The measured distance in the image between the top of the head and the soles of the feet when standing in the plane of motion equated to 1.81 metres, i.e. the known height of the performer. When standing 0.5 metres behind the plane of motion, the measured height of the performer was 1.57 metres, which is 13.3% less than when measured in the plane of motion. When standing 0.5 metres in front of the plane of motion, the measured height was 2.14 metres, which is 18.2% greater than when measured in the plane of motion. If we now consider the same scenario, but with the camera in the far position, i.e. 15 metres from the plane of motion. With the camera in this position, the performer appears to be slightly smaller when standing behind the plane of motion and slightly larger than when standing in front of it. When standing 0.5 metres behind the plane of motion, the measured height of the performer was 1.72 metres, which is 4.8% less than when measured in the plane of motion. When standing 0.5 metres in front of the plane of motion, the measured height was 1.91 metres, which is 5.5% greater than when measured in the plane of motion. Comparison of images recorded in both camera locations re-emphasises that the error involved in measuring the length of objects when they move out of the plane of motion is greatly reduced when the camera is further away. With the camera in the far position, the percentage error in the measured height of the performer when standing behind the plane of motion was 2.8 times less than with the camera in the near position. Similarly, with the performer in front of the plane of motion, moving the camera to the far position reduced the percentage error by 3.3 times. Movement of the camera back from the plane of motion, therefore, significantly reduces measurement error due to movement of objects out of the plane of motion. To summarise, objects behind the plane of motion appear smaller. Conversely, objects in front of the plane of motion appear larger. This effect is reduced by increasing the camera distance from the plane of motion. Therefore, it is important to locate the camera as far from the plane of motion as possible.
To demonstrate the effect of perspective on angles between objects, a cross was constructed from two one-metre rulers and placed on a tripod. Right angles were formed where the metre rulers intersect. With the camera in the far position, images of the cross were recorded with it located in the plane of motion and parallel to the plane of motion, both half a metre behind and in front of the plane. The measured angle at the centre of the cross is the same, i.e. 90 degrees, in all three locations. Thus, providing the cross remains parallel to the plane of motion, its angles are unaffected by its distance either behind or in front of the plane. Therefore, angles are also unaffected by the distance between the camera and the plane of motion. Up to this point, we have investigated the effect of camera distance and movement out of, but parallel to the plane of motion, on measured lengths and angles. This next section investigates the effect of rotating objects out of the plane of motion on both measured lengths and angles. To demonstrate this, two images were recorded, one with the cross in the plane of motion and one with it rotated by 45 degrees. With the cross rotated out of the plane of motion, the length of the rulers appears shorter than when in the plane. The length of a 1 meter ruler when in the plane of motion was used as the scaling information to calculate its length in the rotated position. The calculated length when rotated out of the plane of motion equated to 0.85 meters. With the cross rotated out of the plane of motion, the angles above and below the intersection of the rulers appear more acute, i.e. less than 90 degrees, than when in the plane. Conversely, angles to the left and right of the intersection appear more obtuse, i.e. greater than 90 degrees. As the measurement of angles is based upon relative distances, no scaling information is required for their calculation. With the cross in the plane of motion, the measured angles at the intersection of the rulers are the same as the actual angles, i.e. 90 degrees. However, with the cross rotated out of the plane of motion, the measured angles above and below the intersection are 70 degrees, i.e. more acute. The measured angles to the left and right of the intersection are 110 degrees, i.e. more obtuse. To provide a sporting example of the effect of rotation out of the plane of motion, images of a sprint start were recorded with the athlete's sagittal plane in the plane of motion and at 45 degrees to the plane of motion. The calculated length of the lower leg, i.e. the distance between the knee and ankle joint centres, when in the plane of motion was 0.43 metres. When rotated out of the plane of motion, the length of the lower leg was 0.37 metres. With the athlete in the plane of motion, the measured knee angle, i.e. the relative angle between the upper and lower leg segments, was 87 degrees. With the athlete rotated out of the plane of motion, the measured angle was 83 degrees. To summarise, movement parallel to but out of the plane of motion does not affect measured angles. However, rotation out of the plane of motion affects calculated lengths of objects and measured angles. To summarise this section, when performing a two-dimensional film analysis, to reduce perspective error, it is important to locate the camera as far from the plane of motion as possible. Movement out of the plane of motion introduces error into calculated lengths and measured angles.